Texas Tech coming to Lawrence, Kansas, taking on the Lady Jayhawks tennis. Let's move it over to doubles court three with Yannette Koch, Tanya Nikolaeva. They were not in this at all. They got absolutely overpowered, and when you're playing the number six team in the country, what you realize very quickly is they have depth, both in, th in singles and in doubles, and Koch and Nikolaeva found that out the hard way on court three. Let's move it over to court number one with Nina Kamiltnitz, Kaya, and Tess Bernard Fagenbaum. They had a chance in this one, but they just couldn't get it done. They're the number 50 ranked team in the country, but Texas Tech coming in, just too much power, and they take the doubles point. Okay, you're already down one nothing. Moving over to singles, Nina Kamiltnitz, Kaya, had a really good match all day long. She took the first set. When we pick this one up, she KU is already down three nothing. So Kamut Kaya has to win just to keep Kansas in the match, and she does everything that you'd ask from her to do. She takes the first set, and then in the second set, she plays almost better than she did in the first. And everything about her was was on today. Her shots were good. She had a lot of power. She came in with a lot of accuracy. She had great shot selection, and that is a crucial, crucial win for KU and for Kamel Niskaya to go 2-0 in singles on the weekend. She's starting to heat up. Taking the first point for the Jayhawks, moving over to Tess Bernard Fagenbaums, taking on number 40, Maltby, and she played well in the first set, pushing it to a tiebreaker. Well, she was clean. She was clean the entire first set, and, and Maltby coming in ranked number 40, this would be the highest ranked win that Tess Bernard Fagenbaum has ever had in her career, so she needed a perfect match, and she delivered. Well, the next set was not nearly as clean as the first set. She went down 5-1 with a ton of unforced errors. It was about the errors. It was errors she wasn't making in the first, but in the second she was until she began to clean it up. And it was this point right here when she forced a second set tiebreaker after being down 4-1 that changed everything. She pushed it to a 6-6 tiebreaker, and it was thanks to this double drop shot rally for her. Well, the first drop shot didn't go where she wanted it, but a great recovery. She puts a forehand lob to get back into the point. She sets herself up for a second drop shot, and she doesn't miss on that one. Forehand slice brings Mulpey all the way in. Two-handed backhand lob takes her all the way out. Fagenbaum sets up match point in the second. Yes, it was a huge momentum swing for the Jayhawks to get that second point. Now down only 3-2 with one deciding match to go. That's court six, Nikolaeva. Well, on court six, Nikolaeva, the freshman facing Caitlin Jackson from Texas Tech, who is regarded by Coach Chapman as potentially one of the winningest players in Texas Tech history. So she knows how to win. And Nikolaeva, after getting blanked in the first set, turned everything on mentally. It was nothing she did differently physically. She just wasn't getting on herself. She was forcing long points and not making errors. And Jackson wasn't ready for it in the second set. So Nikolaeva stormed all the way back to force a third. And points like this became pretty commonplace for the late, uh, latter part of the, parts of the match. Well, in the third set, like you said, every point became a war fighting each other 15 shots each point. That's the best word for it, because neither player was willing to back down, and that's basically the theme for the entire third set, and both Nikolaeva and Jackson were hitting these, these really deep baseline shots. They were both playing pretty defensively. It was whichever one was gonna make an error first, which one was gonna make the mistake first, and when you put someone with the experience of Jackson next to a freshman in Nikolaeva, you can pretty much see where that one's going, but it says more about Nikolaeva that she was able to stay in the match for this long. Nothing for her to hang her head about, even though she certainly took the loss pretty hard. Texas Tech clinches at 4-2. Yes, they did clinch it with that one, but the match of the day, Anastasia Rychagova on court one. This ended up not being a factor in terms of the actual match scoring, but we have to talk about it. How could you not? Rychagova plays so, so poorly in the first set, and she came out against the number 17 ranked player uh, in the country, Talaba from, from Texas Tech, and she just looked terrible. She couldn't make her shots, she wasn't locating, but whatever she did in between the first and second set, she turned it around big time. Moving forward to the tie break, 3-2, uh, Rychagova leads, and then a um, questionable call sets up Todd Petty, head coach for Texas Tech. It's a 
credit to Raichigova that she was able to keep her head throughout all that. She ends up winning that tiebreak, forcing a third set on this point right here. Again, the match wouldn't matter, but it means so much to Raichigova to be able to have forced a third set against the 17th ring. From the competitive standpoint, the way we fought, and those kinds of things, I couldn't be happier uh, with our team. We weren't giving in playing one of the best teams in the country and, and no give in right there and so yeah I mean I'm proud of the fight there's nothing to hang our heads about I mean I think there's some things obviously that any coach any team is going to say we could have done a little better but from the standpoint of effort and fight and playing as a team and playing for each other yeah that, that team went to battle today and uh, I'm proud to be their coach. What do you think those things?